How do you undervolt a Ryzen 7 7800X3D? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the It's Not Rocket Science series, we've been helping you troubleshoot and optimize your system to keep it running like a pro. It's Not Rocket Science, and as you'll see throughout this series, it really is Lego. In this video, our focus will be on how to lower your temps and increase performance by undervolting your AM5 based CPU, something every AMD owner should know how to do. I'm sure that many of you have heard about the amazing benefits of undervolting your components, but either don't know how to do it or are scared of messing something up in BIOS or Windows. Don't worry, in this video I'll provide you with step-by-step -step guides on how to set stable undervolts to help you extract max performance from your components. One question I see a lot of people ask is how do I undervolt my CPU and GPU? For your AMD CPU you first need to benchmark it at default settings to establish a baseline. For this I use Cinebench R24, 3 Mark Time Spy and 3 Mark CPU Profile. You can then use a free tool from AMD called Ryzen Master to perform the undervolt. Open Ryzen Master and click on Advanced View. Now click on Curve Optimizer on the left. Under Curve Optimizer Control, select the All Cores option. Under CO All Core Value, you can type in a core offset value. For my CPU, I set it at negative 30. I would recommend starting at something lower, either negative 10 or negative 20, and progressing to the higher values in increments of say negative 5 or negative 10. Now hit Apply at the bottom of the screen and a new screen will pop up asking you if you want to apply and test the offset values you just entered. Hit OK and your system will reboot to automatically make these changes in BIOS. Once it boots back into Windows, it will automatically load Ryzen Master and run a stress test. If the test completes successfully, you will see a confirmation in green at the bottom of the screen. You should then test this curve offset to make sure that your CPU is stable. For this, you can simply use a Cinebench multi-core test. Once you find a stable all-core curve offset, you can rerun the benchmarks used to baseline your CPU at default settings to see what the performance gain was. For my 7800X3D, a curve offset of negative 30 on all cores resulted in a performance increase of around 5%, which is great. In addition, the CPU package temperature went down significantly significantly in the CPU profile test while staying about the same in the other test, which is also great. A 5% performance bump with a 5 degrees Celsius decrease in temperature is a truly amazing result. You can input a curve offset for each core to optimize your system further, however this will take significantly longer to do with diminishing returns, so I would recommend simply sticking with an all core offset. Your results will vary based on silicon quality and cooling solution, but based on these results, it's obviously worth spending time to find a stable undervolt for your CPU. For an AMD GPU, the process is even easier. As with your CPU, you first need to benchmark your GPU at default settings to establish a baseline. For this, I decided to use 3D Mark Time Spy, Speedway, Port Royal, and Steel Nomad, four great GPU benchmarks. Now simply open the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition application that installed with your GPU drivers. Under the Performance tab at the top, select the GPU Undervolted option under GPU and let the software automatically undervolt your GPU. This should take no more than about 30 seconds to run. Now rerun the benchmarks that you use to baseline your GPU at default settings to see what the performance game was. As you can see from my data, the automatic undervolt resulted in a performance gain of only around 2%, which is relatively small. But this was accomplished with a small 1 degree Celsius drop in temperatures, which is good. To get better results for your GPU, you would have to manually undervolt and overclock it, which is not difficult, but takes considerably more time, as outlined in my GPU overclocking guide. Hopefully that helps demystify undervolting and the type of results that you can expect to get with AMD components. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's LEGO. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the It's Not Rocket Science How To series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also consider joining our new membership program, which I'm super excited about. Bye for now.